I'll tell you who had a bad night. Uh, the good folks down in the D.C. area, <laughs> Lake Lewis, uh, kind enough to join us uh, for a couple moments. I don't know what was worse. By the way, Lake does a great job covering the skins for USA Today, and he's a hoops uh, a junkie as well. I don't know what was worse, uh, Washington again with the Matador defense or the Capitals once again showing that they can uh, accumulate all these points in the regular season, but they can't get it done in the playoffs. You know, Q, man. <laughs> This yesterday may have been literally the the the, the bottom of the abyss, and you know an abyss is a, a bottomless black hole. A little hole. dramatic. I, okay. I think I think I think I think we hit it last night. We hit the bottom of it. Wow! And it, it just from the sheer standpoint that you had the Capitals playing, you had the whiz playing yep. you know playoff games you yeah. know and they're all under monumental sports you yep. know the yep. entity here yep. then you had the the nats and orioles playing yeah. too right yeah. here <laughs> yeah it, it was just one of those nights that everyone was really excited and i have to tell you after the first 30 minutes you knew you just you had that feeling the capitals came out against pittsburgh and and basically unloaded everything in the clip on pittsburgh and couldn't score and you just knew. It was like, well, Pittsburgh sustained the initial rush, you know, from being on the road. Caps were desperate. They couldn't crack, you know, uh, Flurry. And you knew right there this might not end well. And sure enough, um, just to see the way that ended. I have to tell you, you know, for me, this was the first year that I didn't cover, uh, you know, as far as going to games. No Caps, no Wizards. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I covered them from afar. But everything for me, obviously, naturally is poured into the Redskins. And, and for that, I have to say, last night was probably one of the first nights that I could wear a fan hat. And I wanted those two teams to win. And just to see that they didn't do it, I, I can only imagine if you're a diehard fan and you've you know invested so much of your personal stake into that, how, how tough that must be. You know, the Capitals, to me, they kind of resemble the Rangers, right? Because Lundqvist, you know, he's 35, 36. Um, it's not like you need him to stand on his head, right? But he's got to stand right. on his head when they're needed the most. And you saw that series. Listen, the Rangers blew leads in game one, game two, game five. I look at the Rangers. I look at the Capitals. To me, it's the same exact franchise. Eventually, you have to turn around and say, do we start to rebuild? Do we blow it up? I mean, I, I still think Rangers' window of opportunity was when they went to the Stanley Cup Finals, but they lost the first game in overtime to the Kings. They haven't, I don't care what anyone says, they still haven't recovered. But every year it seems the same old song and dance because it always falls on Ovi. It falls on Ovechkin when you talk about the Washington Capitals, right? Because when you're the star player, then it's got to fall on your shoulders. Um, You know, how much criticism is he getting and the team, uh, for that matter, after a Game 7 loss, no no less at home? You know, he he didn't, and for my money, he didn't play well offensively, Mm -hmm. but he did play... But, you know, he, he, he's not just a one-dimensional player, and I think people underestimate that. They think that if he's not scoring, he does nothing else. I mean, the guy was checking and things like that. He did have a bad, you know, where he should have cleared the puck when, when he gave up the second goal against Pittsburgh. He should have cleared, and he didn't. But at the end of the day, I, I just think that this is bigger than Ovechkin. Um, I, I think that the, the mental capacity of what goes on every year in the playoffs with this team – it weighs heavily on them. It really does. And, and I think also credit needs to be given where credit is due. And, y- you know, listen, the Penguins, and you, you can appreciate this, Q, the Penguins to the Capitals are what the Bulls were to the Knicks uh, in horrible. basketball. You just can't get over you're the hump. You can't about, beat them. Yeah, yeah, you're talking about a team in yep, the Knicks. Yep that were championship caliber. Make no mistake about that. You don't need, listen, you don't need to tell me. (laughs) I know. (laughs) Right. You know, that guy named Michael Jordan ruined things for people. And this, this guy named Sidney Crosby's ruining it for the Capitals, because if there were no Sidney Crosby, no Penguins, the Capitals may have two or three Stanley cup championships. That's how good this team is. But when they face Pittsburgh, you can just see, and, and I asked someone this the other night. Let's give the Capitals credit for coming back in this series from being down 3-1. But I asked the question, are are they good enough to beat Pittsburgh three straight times? Right. Ah, <laughs> that was asking an which, awful lot. Which is a, it's a great segue into the NBA because it always comes down to can a team find a way 
uh, if they lose that first or second game to come back against, say, a Cleveland or a Golden State, not only win three, but close them out and win that fourth and final. Now, you look at last night. I thought going into the game, we've talked about the Wizards. I thought defensively you have to find a way to slow down Boston, and you have to keep them under 100 points. Um, first of all, is this an aberration or is this a mental thing where this team can just they, – they just can't win on the road? I, you know, I, I'm, I'm baffled by this. You know, they, they're capable of winning clearly on the road because in the first two games they have they blew 20 point lead. So they're capable of playing good stretches of basketball on the road. I just think that they've gotten comfortable to thinking, you know, next game. I, I do feel like that. I think like even even last night, some of the faces on the bench for the Wizards did not look distraught to me. It looked almost as if they were resigned to the fact that we're coming back here, you know, uh, on Saturday or something for a game set. I think they really feel like they'll come back here and they'll handle business. And I'm a little concerned. That, now, that's a too, horrible because, mentality. They're they're not uh, Cleveland. They're not Golden State. Right. Exactly. And I'm a little concerned. I, I'm actually, you know, starting to wonder if Boston closes them out, you know, tomorrow because of the simple fact is somebody has to win on the road. I mean, that's just the way it goes. Well, I think um, what I think what they have going for them too though. Boston doesn't have a lot of history of late of closing out games on the road. It you know this, right? Yeah. What do they say? The toughest yeah. game in all the sports is that closeout game in the series. It's it's really hard to put yeah. a team away. And, and and up until last night, I thought the Wizards looked like the better team overall. I, I you know, I just think Boston has this mental toughness about them. They play with a tough style of play. And it's 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 rattled. It's clearly rattled back by Bradley Bill. I mean, this guy is not looking like the guy that you know had a breakout season this year during the regular season. And Avery Bradley's under his skin. I mean, you can see it. He played John exceptionally Wall, well. Yep, he did. And John Wall yesterday just looked like what I kind of was hoping wouldn't happen. Yeah, he looked tired. <laughs> he just looked like he can't do everything. And and and. If for anyone out there that's questioning me saying that, all you have to do is look across the court at, you know, at Isaiah Thomas. You know, just look at him and look at the fact that he deferred a lot last night to his teammates. Basically, you're going to double team him, triple team him. He gave the ball up and guys made shots. Um, that's what the Wizards are going to need in this next game. In game six, they're going to need for literally for Bradley Bill to have a big game again to send this back to Boston it's just going to be tough for them to win up there. I mean, Boston, different team at home. I will say this, though, not to not to wear any kind of homer hat or anything. I do think the Wizards present a better challenge against uh, Cleveland. You know, maybe I still get, maintain that as well, but yeah, they, they yeah, got to find a way. one game on them. Yeah, well, I think at least uh, disrupt the apple cart a little bit. You know, maybe Cleveland stu uh, stubs their toe. And you're right. I thought last night was that game where we'd be talking about Thomas with 35, Wall with 38, and the Wizards get that yeah. franchise-defining mm -hmm. win. Listen, I, I know, you know, people believe you, you certainly have to win on the road. I still think this is a good team. I think Boston, out of all these teams in the playoff, is actually playing uh, uh, above where they where we really look at them like they're not a legit number one seed but they're doing I what they they're doing what they have to do and eventually if they played Cleveland you know Cleveland's going to be able to expose uh Thomas defensively which actually brings me to this so we were talking about this um the other day on the air you know you look at Durant you look at LeBron you look at Curry you look at James Harden um you know, Harden to me is an interesting uh, player because I still think he's a great scorer of the basketball. I think there mm -hmm. is a element to him that he is a little overhyped, overrated. Um, the defense is horrible. The turnovers we saw late, to me, that's not the recipe for winning basketball. Mm -hmm. It makes me appreciate LeBron that much more. I'm not comparing the two because it's like the the, the no, point. It, it's just he does so much on both ends of the floor. Which kind of leads me into this question. If Cleveland and Golden State meet, as everyone believes they will, in the NBA Finals, and you have a Kevin Durant that struggles in the Finals, is there going to be more criticism laid on the feet of Kevin Durant because he went to Golden State, he wanted to play for Golden State? Because I believe at the end of the day, the difference between guys like LeBron and Durant, LeBron does want that ball late. I still don't think... Kevin Durant wants to ball eight, and he realizes he's not a primary scorer. He's not that first option. It's Curry. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I agree with you on that one. I, I think Durant 
would, you know, shoot at the end. I don't think he's going to defer to anyone. I, I just think that, I mean, you have to think he was really playing with an extreme alpha male when he was in OKC with uh, Russell Westbrook. I don't think there's any player on Golden State's team that has that kind of, you know, alpha male uh, mentality. Because if they, if that were the case, they wouldn't have welcomed Durant. <laughs> I mean, let's just call it what it is. I, I do think that there is some credence to what you're saying, though, as far as the finals. He has to play well, bottom line, because he's the X factor. That's why they went out and got him. And, and you know, for, for my money, you know, we all know that that series is just waiting on ice to, yep. you know, to, to happen. I mean, it's just everything now is the agony of prolonging it. We already knew that from day one of the NBA that those two teams were going to meet. Um, I, I will say this, though. There's more pressure on Golden State than there ever was last year, for the last two years, for that matter. Even you talk about the record last year, regular season, 73 wins, all that stuff. Listen. <laughs> They better win the championship this year because if not, that's going to be one of the most catastrophic failures of any sports uh, pro team, period, even though they would have lost to the defending champion. And that's the irony of it. No one's going to be talking about Cleveland having back-to-back titles. They'd be talking about Golden State folding up the tent. That's what that would be. Yeah, I got to give Josh credit on this. He brought up a great analogy. If they lose, they're almost like the Braves in the 90s. You know, you get to one championship, you win one World Series, you have that starting rotation. But other than that, <laughs> you should have yeah, won three I or think four. They'd be worse. I think they'd be worse than that, frankly, just from the standpoint. Look at the payroll. I mean, look at – I mean, they had four all-stars. <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Lineup. They do. I mean, Which, again, yeah. should, again, it, it makes me – it baffles my mind when people still want to criticize LeBron. Listen, Kyrie is a great player. Kevin Love finally starting to insert himself. He's not a superstar. He's not. Kyrie went off in those finals last year, had the clutch buckets, the 30-point efforts. It was still LeBron leading the charge, right, blocking Iwadala late, uh, that team going on the road to win a game seven. It just shows you, you know, the, the greatness that is LeBron. It, it really does. You know, some people were kind of saying early on in his career, he took – nothing to the NBA Finals. These guys were garbage. He should have won another championship with Miami when they were up 2-0 against the Dallas Mavericks, and Nowinski Mm -hmm. just, he flat out went off, and they earned that title to Dallas. But I look at Mm -hmm. him, you have to appreciate him so much more because this would be his seventh straight Finals appearance. I mean, you you just, you got to give credit where credit is due. I I agree. I mean, listen, LeBron is, is, you know, the best player of this generation, and, uh, you know, I think, you know, LeBron is actually a prisoner of the times as much as he is a success through the times. And I say that because social media can can totally build you up and make you superhuman and all those things and, 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 and allow for younger people to even air or mention him in the same breath as Michael Jordan, which is absurd. But the point is... They truly feel like that because it's it's in the now and, and you can see these things up front. But he's also a prisoner of it too because you also can 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 look at a person's weaknesses, you know, not just on the court but off the court. I mean, everything is under a microscope, you know, and for him, I don't think people truly appreciate his greatness on the court. You know, I think that, you know, talent wise, I've said this and I and I'll continue to say it. The greatest player of all time is Michael Jordan, and, and there's a there's a, a distinct fall off after that, if you ask me. However, in LeBron's situation, I think pound for pound, he's the greatest talent the game's ever seen. Yeah, he's got to do more. He's got to do more night in and night out on both ends of the absolutely. floor that Jordan ever had to do. Uh, absolutely, but but you know, when people always make that comparison amongst the two, you I've can't, always said you can't this. do it. Um, but but I've always said this. Imagine if Michael Jordan played with social media the way it is now it would so it would have solidified that he was untouchable <laughs> well he'd probably be scoring 55 to 60 a night he would take that as straight <laughs> listen i, I you, you you compare you compare lebron to magic jordan is jordan and standalone the only mm-hmm. thing i'll say is watching jordan destroy the knicks year in and year out and just watching jordan in his whole career the one thing he had was that innate ability where he would cut your heart out step over yep. you, pick up your heart, smile, and then drop 50. LeBron just, exactly. he's never going to be that player. It doesn't mean he's not great. He's just, that's not of who course. he is. That's, you know. That's... I agree. I agree. I agree. It's it's unfortunate that those comparisons keep coming up. I mean, 
you know, to the young kids listening, you, you know, 20 years from now, you're going to be doing the same thing with some, some yeah, person. We were talking about that. that. Yep. It, it, it's going to, it's going to happen. Yeah. It, just, it happens all the time, but just appreciate each player's greatness yep. and, and the time that they play because those guys are what's making the next person want to be better. Exactly. So, just just take it for what it is. All right. Well, listen, you took it on the chin with class today, even though I think I was easy on you. Man, I'll tell you <laughs> what, man. Last night was – I know, I know, I know. Time. You're, ho- you're, listen, listen, you're hoping for training camp right around the and corner. Listen, 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 yesterday, the last two days here was, you know, 70 degrees, not a cloud in the sky today. Dark. 50 degrees um, and <laughs> raining. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? You regroup, and uh, we'll kind of put a ball on everything next week. Uh, but I appreciate a couple moments as always, pal. No problem. Take care, right. my friend. You got it. Lake Lewis, good stuff uh, from USA Today. Covers the Redskins.